Alright everyone, so today we're going to be going over actually how to create a program in Eclipse using Java. All we're going to do is make the words hello world appear on the screen and go over the three different ways to actually accomplish that task. Um, and there are a few different ways. So first we need to actually create a project. We do this in Eclipse by going to File, New, Java Project. Next we're going to type in the name. For this one, I'm going to type YouTube, as this is going to be used strictly for YouTube. Next, we're going to click on this drop-down arrow right here, right-click this source right here, source folder, say New, and Class. Now, the name of your class should always start with a capital letter. If it's going to be multiple words, you want to have each uh, first letter of each word capitalized. So if we said something like um, shirt store, you would make sure that each one of them has a capital letter at the beginning. For this one, we are just going to say salmon, because why not? Now it says the use of default package is discouraged, of the default package is discouraged. Um, that's not really important. We're not going to go over packages just yet. This program will probably be scrapped before we even get that far. Uh, but for now, just ignore that. When we get into pro, uh, projects that are large enough to have separate packages, we'll get into the use of a, a different package rather than just the default. Now we'll just say finish. Um, one more thing, actually. This modifier public and the superclass java.lang.object are very important and we'll go over them later but for now just keep this in the back of your mind because this is the most important thing in all of Java right there anyways so we're going to say finish and actually begin our program so let's go over here and then just enter down a couple times so we have space and what we're going to do is create a function called main. Now, don't worry about what all this means, don't worry about what a function is, and don't worry about what I mean by most of what you're typing. We'll go over it later. It's not important for you to understand just yet, but this is where your program will start, is within the curly braces of the function that I'm about to have you type out. So first, you're going to type public static void main and then left parenthesis and right parenthesis. Inside of these parentheses you want to type string with a capital S, left square bracket and right square bracket, space, and then args. And args is just going to be short for arguments in case you're wondering and we'll actually go over what the string and the brackets are later on. Now outside of this parenthesis we're going to do a left curly brace press enter and it should create this right curly brace for you. Make sure that that is there, it's very important, otherwise you'll, you will create a syntax error. We're going to hit enter a few more times so we have more space and we're actually going to get into creating words on the screen. So first thing is type system with a capital S. What this does is it allows you to access the Java default system uh, pieces. There's a lot of different things. You have system in, you have system out, that type of deal. So these are the things that are specific to your system and how it interacts with the Java virtual machine. Then we're going to say out, which allows us to access the print stream of your computer. If you don't know what that means, it doesn't matter. It's a more technical thing. You don't really need to know what it is in order to use it. Then we're going to do dot print ln. Now there's three different ways to print. This is the most simplistic way. And it's print ln or print line and we're going to follow this by left and right parenthesis again with a semicolon and this is the simplest way to actually make something appear on the screen this will absolutely do nothing though it, no words are going to be sent to the screen no information will but it allows us to access it to actually make a word appear we need to go in between these parentheses again and type a double quote and another double quote and within these two quotes type the message that we actually want to output to the screen like I said in the beginning of this video, we're going to say hello world. So hello, comma, world, exclamation point. Just like Dan Ritchie did in the days before Windows. The old ancient times of the wizards. Anyways, 
Now we're going to go over the second way, which is the printf or print format method of printing things to the screen. Starts out the same way, except instead of println, we're going to do printf. Now you'll see that uh, Eclipse tries to fill these in for you oops, with format and args, and it kind of makes it look more complicated because it's saying that you want to use multiple things. And so what we're going to go over is actually just, we're going to say hello, comma, world, percent, s. And then outside of the second double quote, comma, double quote, exclamation point. That way we filled in both of those variables that it showed us in those parentheses. I'll go over what this does, why we put a percent s, and why we put an exclamation point outside of the rest of the string which is what the things in between the quotations are actually referred to as, I guess. Um, now the third one is just print. Um, also, by the way, uh, you'll see that you get this little documentation thing over here. Those are actually pretty useful. Um, you'll see this one says like, um, prints an array of characters. The characters are converted into bytes according to the platform's default character encoding, and these bytes are written in exactly the manner of the write int method. That may sound complicated, and trust me, it is, and it has nothing to do with anything you'll ever need to know. Um, so now, we just need to, again, do the same thing we did above, and this time we're going to actually uh, add something to the end, and I'll, I'll show you why. So. If we do, or actually no, let's put let's put this one between the uh, print line and the print f, and there's going to be a reason why we're doing this. Print hello world, just as we did in the other two, and then a backslash n quotation, and always remember this semicolon at the end, guys. If you don't put that there, you get a syntax error because it's expecting the end of your statement, and that's what this semicolon actually signifies, is that you're ending your statement. It, it's like the period at the end of a sentence. And this is like the actual word you're saying. This is your period. Make sure you do not forget your period. It's very important, and bad stuff happens when you don't put that there. All right, we can save that with Control S, and then go over here where it says run salmon.java. If we hit this green circle with a white arrow, and then go down here, we see the words in this little term, this little terminal. Hello world, hello world, hello world, hello world, hello world. Now, looking at this, you may be saying, "Wow, that looks really interesting." Everything looks exactly the same, even though it's different in each one of the examples. So let's actually go over what's going on and why they look this way. So, system.out.println is the first thing. Java executes from top to bottom, so because this is the top statement, it's the first one executed, and we see it, it says hello world, and it's perfectly fine. Then we see there's another line below it that says the same thing. Now, why did it go on the bottom? You may not be asking that, you may just be like, oh, okay, it went on the bottom. But, as we see in the print, statement right here, not print line, but print, we have this, oops, we have this backslash n. Now why is this here but not in there, and what's really the difference between print and print line? Well this backslash n is what we call an escape sequence. An escape sequence is when you precede a letter or some other type of character with a backslash, which then allows it to signify some other character that can't be normally represented. And this is the new line character, which means to go down one line. Now when you use the system.out.println method, it automatically appends this, adds it to the end, of whatever string you put here. Which is why, without putting a backslash n, this string, hello world backslash n, was actually put on the other line. Without this backslash n, the hello world percent s thing would not be there. Now again, the percent %s is also something very interesting, and this is a format um, in a string. The percent actually says that we are going to format something as another type. S just says we're formatting as a string, and the args that we saw over here is actually 
um, anything we want to put. We could put a number, we could put a string, we could put a single character, we could do whatever we want right here and it will format it into the string however we tell it to. So that's why we put a percent s here was really just to show how it works. You don't have to put it there, we could remove it and in fact we are going to remove it just so I can show you guys some of the differences that would happen if we remove these things. If we just try to print hello world um, in, in all three of these we're going to get some different output. And you'll see, wow, okay, so print line expectedly printed something and printed everything else on the other line. But we see hello world and this hello world on the same line because we removed the backslash n. Now printf also requires this backslash n and we could demonstrate that by putting this between these two and uh, the last two prints would still be on the same line regardless, but it's it's not really important now. Uh, again, it's because of the escape sequence. And we see that even though we didn't do the uh, string format, we still have our exclamation point and we had no errors. If we remove a semicolon, for example, we will get an error. And I recommend you guys to just pull out random bits of this and Google what is actually going on. If we say proceed, um, even though there's an error, we get exception in thread main java.lang error, unresolved complication problem syntax error insert semicolon to complete statement basically saying hey you put a semicolon there and then it works now there's other escape sequences other than backslash n uh, you can google them very easily just say uh, standard escape sequences or standard escape sequence list or escape characters list or something like that and you'll find it um, same with the printf, say something like string format um, list, string format characters, and so forth, and it'll give you a description of how all they, how all of them work. It's a very, com it's a very common thing between all languages, um, the escape sequences and the format, um, the string formats are all the same. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any other questions or comments, let me know um, in the comment section below or through a personal message. If you like the video, press the like button. It always helps. Uh, view the video like a hundred times because that even helps more. Uh, share it. Favorite it. Subscribe if you want to see future videos. And thank you guys for watching. I'll be seeing you later. Bye.